How's it guys? What's going on? As you see, we're surrounded by snow. It is, let me grab my phone. It is, what's the temperature out right now? 25 degrees on a beautiful sunny day in Geneva, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. Definitely not Hawaii. If you see, I'm actually gonna screen record. This is my second time or third time doing this because one of the times I didn't get my screen recording to actually take, which really blew because I felt like I did a really good take. So these YouTube videos, bear with me. They're not so simple to do on your own all the time. I'm still kind of getting the whole filming thing down. But if you see, we got 25 degrees in Geneva. We're gonna look at UAV forecast. So before flying a drone, this drone video, so you guys are aware, I should get to that, is gonna be essentially about exposing for snow and some winter flying tips. Flying in the snow can be difficult to expose for a lot of people. And even when I was in school for photography back 20 years ago in the darkroom days, people had a lot of difficulty with exposing whites like this and they a lot of times overexposed or really underexposed. So to perfectly expose snow, we should rely on tools that we have available to us, like our histograms, and knowing how to utilize those with conditions like this will help out a lot. And again, a couple other tips that I'll get into in the video. So if you're taking still pictures or getting footage, we got the Mini 2 with us right now. And if we're shooting 4K, we're shooting just still images. As I said, we can now shoot with the Mini 2 and a lot of the other drones, RAW plus JPEG. So we're gonna show you how to optimize everything to get the most out of your winter flying. So let's get with it. I'm gonna go and look at UAV forecast. We're gonna pull that up. It says not good to fly. I don't know why it says not good to fly, possibly because of the cold, but the winds are really minor. I think it's a beautiful day to fly, minus the cold temperatures for the drone. And just so you guys are aware, flying in cold temperatures that aren't rated for your drone can be technically considered, at least in the US by the FAA, hazardous or reckless. So I talked to Greg at Pilot Institutes and he sent me this. He essentially said, it's not illegal per se. There's nothing in the regulation that talks about cold weather, but if something happened, the FAA would slap you a fine based on the following. 107.15, condition for safe operation. No person may continue flight of the small unmanned aircraft when he or she knows or has reason to know that the small unmanned aircraft system is no longer in a condition for safe operation. So again, there's no real reason to worry or be concerned until there's a reason to be concerned and worry. So, you know, I mean, it's not that big of a deal to fly, but if something were to happen, guess what? You're gonna most likely be at fault because you weren't even really supposed to be flying the drone based on the specs not rated for these kinds of temperatures and conditions. So just be conscious of that. If there's not a good reward, don't take the risk. I mean, I would take these types of flights a little bit more conservatively. I know this area, I'm just gonna essentially fly across the street, there's a sledding hill, get a little easy footage. I'm flying the Mini 2, so there's not really that big of a concern with the Mini 2, it's such a light, small drone. And again, they also say 107.23, hazardous operation. So this can be considered hazardous or reckless if something were to really go terribly wrong. And again, yes, most likely it won't, but you never know. And if something were to happen, you would be at fault. So again, be conscious of that and mindful of that when you're flying in these types of winter conditions. So let's get on with this. I'm gonna go ahead and get my drone out. and. First off, you wanna make sure you have your batteries fully charged. You don't want them to be sitting in the charger for five days. You want them to be freshly charged 110%, so they're good to go. You want them to be room temperature. I keep this always in my house at a nice temperature. I never keep them in the car, for example, where it's cold and it's getting really big fluctuations in temperature. So I'm gonna grab my drone. I'm gonna grab the Mini 2 out. I'm gonna take off my gloves and mind you, Rule number two or tip number two is be warm. If you're not warm and comfortable when you're flying in these conditions, I have long underwear on, I got gloves, I got two hats on, you're not gonna be focused and you're gonna be distracted from your task at hand, which is flying safely and getting the footage that you want. Right now, it's 25 degrees. I wanna make sure that I'm warm and not distracted and have my gloves. I got gloves that I could actually, these are called A gloves, so they have little silver or whatever flakes in the actual glove so I could still operate my iPhone, but it keeps me warm enough. I'll put a link in the description 
so you guys can buy them if you want. They're only like $10 and they're a super great company. These are medium large. That's probably the best size for the average guy hand. If you're a larger hand, then obviously go large or extra large. But let's get into it. I'm gonna go and get my drone out. I'm gonna take my gloves off to do this. So we're just gonna kinda go through the steps, pull out the Mini 2, and we have this little guy right here. It's not cold, so the battery's at a good temperature. I'm gonna check the battery. It's fully charged. I could also hit this little button on the butt of the drone on the Mini 2, and that will also give you the LEDs of the battery level so you guys are aware. It's kind of cool. I didn't, most people probably, I don't know if people know this is a button, but it is. So I'm gonna take off the gimbal cover. I'm gonna go ahead and power this guy on. So it's one quick press and one long hold. The drone will power on. I'm gonna place this guy on my car. And then I have my iPhone 12 Pro Max, wherever that went, where did it go? Where are you, iPhone? It is, here it is. So I got my iPhone 12 Pro Max, and not a huge fan of this phone, but the biggest pro to this phone is the display and the real estate size for flying drones. So this iPhone 12 Pro Max, the 6.7 inch, is awesome for flying, just so you guys are aware. I have a smart controller at home, and I opt to fly with my iPhone the majority of time, unless I'm really using my Mavic 2 Pro or Zoom. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my iPhone in the controller. And see, I think for some reason, I don't know why, but it stopped screen recording. So I'm gonna make sure, it's kind of making me paranoid. I don't know why it's stopping. Okay, we got the screen recording going. I'm gonna go ahead and power on the drone and we're gonna go into the DJI Fly app. And there was an update, just so you guys are aware, for the Mini 2 and we now have zoom on the photo side. It apparently did something that enhanced stability with the transmission. I don't know exactly what was going on. It's gonna ask me to calibrate the compass. So we gotta go and do the drone dance and calibrate the compass. I'm gonna go really quickly let me point this thing over here. I'm gonna go away from the metal objects. Okay, so I should be good. I'm gonna hit start. I'm gonna make sure we're recording the screen. I'm gonna rotate 360, turn it facing upward, rotate 360, and calibration successful. So that was easy, I'm dizzy. If you look straight, level at the horizon, it will help you guys just so you're aware with not being disoriented. Okay. I could already see based on my display that I'm overexposed, but I'm not worried about that. That's what this video is about. I'm gonna put it on airplane mode, lower my volume a little bit, and we're gonna launch. So here we go, hand launch, put the sticks inward, start the little guy. And just so you guys are aware, some people say to keep it kind of going somewhere low, like 30 to seconds to a minute, just to get everything warmed up. I don't know if it truly matters. I think the more important part of it is to just make sure that nothing's going on with the drone and it's flying all right, and especially if you're in really cold temperatures. So I'm gonna go and put my gloves back on because they're already kind of getting cold, my fingers. I'm gonna get this guy up in the sky. I gotta cross the street, so I gotta make sure I'm doing that when no traffic is going. Now we're gonna go and adjust the exposure. So right now I'm gonna check again, see if my screen recording is there, it is. I'm gonna adjust the shutter speed. Now mind you, I don't have any filters for this guy yet. I think I'm gonna buy some Tiffin filters, but that would be a big component to flying this kind of really bright, sunny, snowy white weather. You would wanna have a neutral density like a 16 or 32 or something to keep your shutter speed slower, but for still pictures, not that big of a deal. And again, we're not gonna 
cover that because I don't have filters on this guy right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the exposure kind of dialed in. And one thing we wanna have, see this histogram? This is what this is, this little palette that's floating. I'm gonna X out of it and show you how to access that. So I'm gonna make sure we're recording again. <laughs> I'm super paranoid. I'm gonna to go to camera and I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and here we see histogram. I'm gonna to toggle this on and this is a graphical indicator of what our exposure is doing. So see that peak to the right? All the way to the right are your brights and all the way to the left are your dark areas, like your shadows essentially. So if I go to two thousandth of a second, you'll see it's gonna to hug to the left. That's gonna to be too dark or underexposed. And if I go really long exposure, you're gonna see we got total crazy snow white polar bear exposure and that's way overexposed. And you see that little spike all the way to the right? That's what that's showing you, showing you it's way overexposed. So I'm gonna get this graph, essentially the histogram, somewhere in the middle, probably a little bit on, that's probably good. I'm gonna go up, and this thing's flying kinda of towards a tree, which thankfully it didn't just hit. So I'm gonna go way high just in case we drift a little bit. I'm gonna take a picture really quickly just because I can, and it actually looks pretty nice. But one thing we're gonna to wanna to do, actually a couple things. So we have the histogram that we can maneuver this palette around too. So if it's in your composition, go ahead and move it around. It's totally no big deal. We can X out of it, easily toggle it back on again by hitting that. And another thing with the Mini 2 and a lot of these other drones, what we can do is now shoot in JPEG plus RAW. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we're not in JPEG, we're in JPEG plus RAW and this will allow us to get the most out of our files. So we can actually pull exposure out of our footage and our files, or at least our files, I should say, for still photos. So two things, histogram, again, one, JPEG plus RAW, and another thing which really can come in handy is having your auto exposure bracketing on. So this will actually take three pictures, one normal exposure, one under, and one over. So say I go and hit that, it's gonna take three different pictures and it's gonna basically give me enough range to do anything I want. I got the raw flexibility, I got the auto exposure bracketing on, so I got three different exposures of the same image that I can composite or do whatever I want with. If I wanna bring in, say, the sky or some detail or whatever it is. So I basically have the histogram that I'm reading to make sure I'm in the ballpark. That looks good. Maybe I wanna even go with this shot one eight hundredth of a second to get it a little bit more in the middle and then do one more like that. So I'll do one more bracket of that exposure. I'm gonna go and fly over the road right now. Okay. So the sledding hill is kind of beat up now but we're gonna still get some footage and play around. Now, as you see, the sun's straight in front of us. Checking again, making sure we're recording. The sun is in front of us, so we may even wanna take it down another notch. Maybe something like 12 50th of a second, just because the sky may not be as important in this shot. So I'm gonna go a little higher. And now let's touch on the video aspect of it. So let's go and get some footage. So we're gonna shoot at, 20, I don't know, 24 frames a second, 4K. I'm gonna shoot manually. And again, if I had a filter, I can get the exposure and the shutter to be, or the shutter, I should say, to be a little slower, which would be more optimal, obviously. But it is what it is for the moment. And honestly, it doesn't look that bad. So let's just go and do a little manual orbit around this guy. I'm gonna hit start and I'm looking at my histogram and it looks good. I'm gonna kind of cruise around the trees, get my little, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna go. So just doing a nice little manual orbit. I'm kind of cruising. I wanna hang to the left a little bit maybe raise the gimbal a little bit. I'm gonna look, make certain, I know I'm clear of the trees, but I still wanna 
visually look for my own peace of mind. I'm gonna fly back a little bit. Okay. If I go and throw my controller in the tripod mode, it will throw it in the cine mode. I using my I'm actually using my Mavic Air 2 controller for my mini because it's essentially the same controller. And I got everything dialed down a lot slower in tripod mode so you can see movements are a little bit smoother, nicer. Doing a nice little orbit pullback, raising the gimbal. Kind of pretty, huh? It's a nice little zone. They need more snow. I think we're getting more snow tomorrow. So that will be good for the sledding kitties. But one other thing too, if we're shooting in auto mode, so I'm gonna switch over to the auto in the bottom right hand corner, you can essentially do the same thing. If this EV compensation, this right here, so basically plus is brighter, minus is negative. I mean, basically plus is brighter exposure, more exposure, minus is negative darker exposure. So more bright, less bright. In Hawaii, we talk pigeon a lot. So a lot of the local kind people, that's how we explain stuff to them. You're just like more bright, less bright. Really simplistic, dummy down but it's easy for everyone to understand. So again, plus brighter, minus darker. And all we're looking at, or all I'm looking at right now is that histogram. So that histogram's hugging pretty much in the middle, a little bit on the darker side. I may go plus three, and now I'll lock the exposure with that little lock button down below. Now essentially I'm good to go flying. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus, or hit plus. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the the start button, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a little orbit this way. Raise the gimbal. Let go of the gimbal. And just really slow, nostalgic type footage for people to kind of relive their childhood memories of this sledding hill which is really popular in our area. But you see, it's properly exposed. I know I can color grade this and get whatever I want out of it. And I'm looking, no matter how bright or dim my display is, I can see that histogram and I can see that I'm exposed properly. So that's crucial. So I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna go and get a still picture and what is new, I believe, which I didn't even talk about, or I did talk about it, but I didn't do anything with it yet, is that one time, two times. So we now have zoom on the Mini 2. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and see what that does. That's pretty cool. Gives us a little bit more zoom. This could be good for roof inspections and stuff. And I'm gonna go and bracket and get a shot just like that. Maybe I'll go higher. Let's see. I haven't obviously tested the photo zoom side as far as the quality. I wanna to check to make certain it does shoot JPEG plus raw. So we're getting with the two time zoom and photo, a raw image file. So that's cool. And I'm gonna take this because I know I'm properly exposed. I'm gonna take it out of the auto bracket mode just for this tutorial for the moment. But if it was something I was really concerned about, there's no reason not to bracket because the files are so small and memory cards are so inexpensive now, why not? But now we can go one time all the way to two time. And I'm just scrubbing on that little one time thing and that's what's pulling up this little dial. So that's pretty cool. Really gives this Mini 2 a lot of flexibility. Honestly, I'm loving this thing. I crashed my Mavic 2 Pro and I feel like I could live with this drone constantly and be completely content. This thing is really a killer little drone. So this is at 1.3 times and it looks good. But let's get this guy, I think, back in. I don't know if I need any more footage, but 
I'm hoping this will help out because again, white is definitely tough to expose. You don't want it to be too white where there's no detail. It may look clean, but you want to have detail in your image, especially if you're planning on printing. Because if you print and there's no detail and it's just blank white, guess what? There's not going to be any ink even going into the paper. So make sure that this thing is not blown out like that because it's way too bright and it's not going to look good. So pay attention to your histogram, make sure you're shooting in JPEG plus RAW, and also take advantage of the auto exposure bracketing feature when you're taking pictures. So I'm hoping this helps guys. When again, with the video, same kind of thing. If you're shooting in auto and you're an auto person for whatever it's worth, make sure you at least pay attention to the histogram. You see that it looks good and make sure if it looks good that you then depress and hit the lock button down below right next to that little auto button. And now we can go and fly. I'll fly this way because I don't want to go over the road. And just kind of cruise a little bit and really slow, nice footage, pull back a little bit. And again, the gloves help me do this comfortably. Ideally, I don't like having the gloves on to control the sticks, but I'm telling you, over numb fingers, they definitely, you can take the sacrifice of not having, you know, you'll get used to it essentially. So fly with these kind of gloves. These A gloves rock, honestly, because they're thin enough that they still give you feel, and they're warm enough that they'll keep you out for hours, honestly. I've, I've used these things for years now, and I really stand behind them, so. I'll put a link again below so you guys have that, but I just have the normal ones. I don't have any grip or anything on the bottom of mine. And let's get this guy home. And again, we want to pay attention to the battery level, of course. We're at 51%. Let's get this guy back home and land safely. I'm going to go throw it in the normal mode. And now cruise, and I could kind of see, and with this grid so you guys are aware too, I can really pinpoint where my car is at. So I basically just aim it where I'm at. I know where I'm at. I'm in this parking lot across the street. I'm gonna look visually at traffic. There's no traffic now. Oh wait, there there is. Now I'm gonna hightail across the street. Blah, blah, blah. And here we are. So I'm right in this area. Where am I? There I am. So if I put the gimbal all the way down, I could see the drone. And what's kind of cool too, look at this. Like my eye visually is now seeing these trees and that looks pretty awesome to me. So I don't know why my camera, my D850 stopped recording at the very end. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly and redo this. <laughs> it's wanting me to land. I was landing when it was 30%, but I wanted to at least show you how to land properly just to kind of complete the video. I'm gonna throw my gimbal down. Let me lower this guy a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna cruise back over by me. And as you see, I got this crosshair going. And I can visually see the little mini too. And I'm gonna throw the crosshair right on me. There I am, right there. Do, 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 do. Essentially, that's where I'm at. So for the gimbal down in the crosshair, you essentially pinpoint your exact area and then just come down. So I'm gonna lower altitude. A lot of times I'll put it in the sport mode, but I'm not that high right now. And we will land the drone safely. I'll still obviously look and keep an eye on everything. Get it back over here. And then here we go. We got little Mini 2 back safely. We'll put out our hand. It detected something there. And that's it. So we got the Mini 2 safely back. And winter flying tips 101 for exposing properly in the snow. And again, just be conscious that in these conditions, you want to be extra mindful because if something were to happen, they are considered 
not ideal safe conditions. And just keep in mind that if something were to happen, you may be in trouble and you don't want that to obviously happen with the FAA. So be respectful, be mindful, subscribe if this helps you guys out and hit the like button. And again, hit the notification bell to see more videos when I release them. I got a really beautiful Chicago edit that's gonna drop soon. So stay tuned. Happy New Year, guys. Have a great 2021. Let's kick ass in 2021 and make it super positive and beautiful. Aloha, bye.